Congress can make no laws limiting speech or publication, with some exceptions. Let's clear those up before we go on. The following are not protected by the First Amendment. Obscenity, and this is not the same as profanity, inciting imminent lawless action, true threats, false statements of fact, and defamation. As with anything to do with law, it's complicated. There have been whole series of books written about the First Amendment, and people have careers focused on it. So keep in mind we're being very basic here. Now you might well ask, does the First Amendment give high school students the same protections? Again, it's complicated, but here are some things to know. In 1969, the Supreme Court ruled in the Tinker v. Des Moines case that students do not shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. And that's a big deal. But of course, it's not simple. The ruling added that student expression was not protected if it could result in material and substantial disruption of normal school activities. What's that mean in practice? Here's one example. If a student newspaper published an editorial saying that students should join a planned walkout to protest something, that would not be protected since it would be advocating a substantial disruption of normal school activities. However, if the paper wrote a news story covering the students who were planning the walkout, as long as they weren't participating in any way, that would be protected. For more details on the Tinker ruling, see our video on that topic. Unfortunately, the Tinker case is not the end of the story. In 1988, the Supreme Court ruled on the Hazelwood case, saying that if a school district found a reasonable educational justification, they could censor student expression. And of course, it's really more nuanced than that. So we have a whole separate video on Hazelwood, too. But federal law isn't the end of the story. States can create their own laws to give students rights to free expression. Some of them also protect student media advisors. These laws are often referred to as New Voices laws, and the Scholastic Press Rights Committee works to help every state give students these protections. It's very important that you learn what your state laws say about student media. Your school district may have favorable policies even outside of New Voices states, so it's worth checking or approaching your school board to get a favorable policy passed. One last note, students in private schools may not get the same protection as public school students. I have some suggestions for private school students in our video on building bridges, and I think everyone should check that one out. For the Scholastic Press Rights Committee, I'm Trip Robbins.